Greetings viewers, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are back on the 2010 Outback. We have covered this car extensively in the last few weeks. Today, they brought the car back for a timing belt and water pump replacement. Car is about 176,000 miles. We do not know the age of the timing belt set on here, the timing set on here. Uh, they bought it, I believe, right past 100,000 miles, maybe 110. Uh, so we don't know if the time belt has ever been replaced in this car. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and preemptively do it. Uh, it might be a little bit early if it is a second time replacement, if it was done on time. But rather to be safe than sorry with your time belt on the EJ series engine, it would be better to change it early and know that you're safe than wait and it potentially break on you and destroy the engine and bend all the valves. So with that said, let's go ahead and tear into this car and get the new time belt water pump kit installed. So guys, here we are. We've got the time belt cover off, got the radiator out. We are into our prize here. And we see this is a Subaru Genuine belt, but because almost all the writing is worn off, it's pretty much at the end of its life. Uh, normally when the writing's gone, that means there's about 70, 80,000 miles on the belt. Uh, this lower pulley, actually all the pulleys, as you can see, has got a buildup of uh, schmoo. That one's pretty worn. This one is the one that always fails, and it has got a ton of buildup in it. I'm sure it is very loose and noisy when we get it off. And our tensioner has a lot of leakage around it. Not a good sign. So good thing we got in here to replace this right now before there was any kind of failure for this customer. So another thing about this, we've got all genuine components, which I absolutely love to see on a Subaru. And we are, of course, installing an Ison time belt kit with all genuine Subaru, um, well, the OE components Subaru uses, NTN tensioners, NSK, and Koyo bearings, and a Mitsuboshi timing belt. The only non um, factory thing here will be the Ison water pump, uh, where this Subaru will have a Yamada pump on it. So, let's go ahead and get all these components off, check them, see how bad they were. So we got all the old components off, and they're all pretty daggum rough, uh, especially the thermostat and water pump. Now, on these, remember guys, this is a metal gasket. You put it on dry, there is no RTV, silicone, gasket maker, anything of that nature. Put it on dry. Now, a lot of people, when they are doing a water pump replacement on an EJ series engine for the first time, they have a lot of difficulty getting that water pump and gasket in there and aligned. According to the factory service manual, you're supposed to remove the passenger side or the driver's side uh, cam sprocket, that rear timing cover, and that tensioner bracket above the water pump in it goes right on but let's face it most of us do just this pull the water pump out put it back in don't touch anything around it so an easy way to get this in here and make sure your gasket doesn't move take two small phillips head screwdrivers or two picks and pick two holes to run them through and uh, run them through the gasket then push them in the holes and that'll act as alignment dials to keep your gasket in place on the water pump till you can start your first couple of bolts then you can pull those out screwdriver a pick and put your bolts back in and you're perfectly good to go so there you go a lot of guys have that issue with the water pump quick little tip just stick something in the holes and uh, hold that gasket up because if you don't and try to do it by hand this way in that hole in that recess that gasket drops down it doesn't align and you'll be wanting to throw this water pump through the windshield and curse so guys, just like this, no, you don't have to have fancy snap-on gasket holders. And you just slide it in there. Hard to do one-handed, so I'm uh, not going to go ahead and stab it in there.
All right, so your water pump's in. Next thing you gotta do is put in a new thermostat, guys. There's no reason not to put a thermostat in when doing this procedure. Now, there's only one option for a thermostat in a Subaru, and that's a Subaru Genuine Thermostat. And uh, this is just a quick show of why. So this is a genuine Subaru thermostat. Big, beefy, rarely ever fail. This is a thermostat for this Subaru that you will get at Advanced Auto Parts, AutoZone, O'Reilly's. This piddly little thermostat here. It's a sad sight that this is considered a replacement or an equal to this. I've seen so many people have issues, overheating, cooling issues with their Subaru because they put some junk aftermarket thermostat in there. Guys, these are not that expensive. Use a Subaru Genuine Thermostat, and when you install it, always remember to put the jiggle valve at 12 o'clock. So guys, something else to think about, and that is your tensioner. Now, you can bolt this on and pull the pin and go ahead and roll with it, but Subaru has changed their procedure and a lot of these time belt kits now have a warning that you need to bleed this tensioner before installing it. Now, the recommended procedure is to use a shock press and I believe you can press this over uh, no less than five or 10 minutes. You don't wanna just ram this thing back in. You could blow the seals out. So the reasoning behind this is during shipping and stuff, this thing can be all kinds of which ways, upside down on its side, etc., and air can be introduced into this hydraulic cylinder. So all you need to do is pull the pin, let it extend fully, and then slowly compress it, put the pin back in, then you can bolt it on the car. Now remember, you have to compress it with it in the upward position. And once you've compressed it, you need to keep it up. If you tilt it over, lay it on its side, you gotta start over because you could introduce air once again. Now again, you don't need a fancy shot press. You can take a big C-clamp and do the exact same thing. Big old C-clamp. Put your tensioner in there, adjust the clamp, where it's just tight on that tensioner piston, just barely touching it. Then what I do is go ahead, pull the pin, and slowly open up the C-clamp, and allow it to expand. And then what you're gonna do is just take it, make sure you're in the middle as you saw it kind of cocked out sideways there, is uh, line it up and just every 30 seconds or so, give it a turn until you've got it completely compressed and can put this pin back in. And there you go, got it compressed, ready to install. Again, once you've got it back in there, don't tilt it, don't move it, bolt it straight on the car, keep it in the upright position. All right, guys, once you've got all of the new components in and torqued to specification, make sure your time marks are lined up. Bang on right there with the crack in the uh, cylinder head. Not crack, but a parting line. Bang on with the crank and the oil pump. And bang on. Can't show you because of the camera. Uh, but bang on there, the notch, the yellow line, and the pink mark. So, good rule of thumb is to turn the crankshaft to revolutions and make sure all the marks line up. Now, when you do this, your paint marks on the belt will not line up. They are there for the first installation only. You have to rotate that belt some couple hundred times for them to line back up. Uh, so, just make sure that your marks on the actual gears, the cam gears and the crank gear, match your timing marks on the timing cover, the oil pump and the cylinder head. So test spin is done. As you see, our marks no longer line up from the belt, but we do have our timing marks set bang on there. They are bang on there. And again, hard to show you, but bang on there. Now the funnest part of all of this, pull your grenade pin. Now, once that's done, put your timing covers on and you are ready to go. All right, guys, now that everything's back together, it's on to the easiest part of this procedure, which used to be the hardest, and that's refilling the cooling system. Guys, it doesn't matter what brand it is, get yourself an airlift. It makes refilling cooling systems a pleasure. All you gotta do is hook shop air up to it, draw a vacuum on the entire system, flip a lever, and suck your fresh coolant right out of the jug inside the cooling system with no air bubbles and no burping required.
It's just that easy, guys. System's gonna suck in fresh coolant out of the jug and there'll be no air bubbles. Just put the cap on, radiator cap on, and you're good to go ahead and drive it. Just makes it such a much more pleasurable service. Getting low on that jug, you're gonna refill it. No more air bubbles in the heater core, no more difficult bleed procedures. And we've used all our vacuum up. So we can go ahead and check to see if we're filled up. And we're not quite. So pull another little vacuum. Just till we start pulling out coolant. Let me drink the rest of that in there. Put another quick little vacuum. Just till coolant starts coming out. Once it does, we'll turn it back off and continue filling. Make sure all of that air is out of that system. And there you have it, guys. We should be up to the top of the filler neck, and we are. So all we gotta do is put another ounce or so in, put the radiator cap on, and we are done. That'll do it for the video. Hopefully you found these timing belt servicing tips helpful. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one.